Your Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Amy Oshibajo, the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, the Speaker, House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, the Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Walter Oningwe, here represented, State Governors, President, Principal Officers, and Members of the National Assembly, Members of the Federal Executive Council, the National Chairman, All Progressive Congress, Chief Odigi Oyegun, party officials here present, senior government officials, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to present 218 budget proposals before presenting the budget. Let me thank all of you distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly, and indeed all Nigerians for your support and prayers for my full recovery while I was on medical vacation. I am very pleased to address this joint session of the National Assembly on the revenue and expenditure estimates and related matters of the Federal Government of Nigeria for 2018 fiscal year. The 2018 budget will consolidate on the achievements of previous budgets and deliver on Nigeria's economy recovery and growth plan 2018-2020. 2017 so far has been a year of uncertainty on many fronts across the world, whether it is Brexit, the crisis in Korean Peninsula, or indeed the political uncertainty in key oil producing nations of the Middle East and South America. We can all agree that these developments have in one way or another impacted Nigeria's economic fortunes. By all accounts, 2018 is expected to be a year of better outcomes. The tepid economic recovery is expected to pick up pace and the play global political terrain is expected to stabilize. We took our time to create a balanced and equitable response, keeping in mind that only tailored Nigerian <coughs> solutions can fix Nigeria's unique problems. And from the recovery, that we are seeing today, it is clear that we made the right decisions. Distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly, I am now asking you to continue to support our economic policies in order to consolidate and sustain on the success achieved so far. We simply cannot go back. In the non-oil sector, Crop production has been one of the main contributors to non-oil growth, which rose to 0.45% in the second quarter of this year. This was primarily driven by our ongoing financial capacity building and infrastructure development programs. Significant progress has also been made in the solid minerals development sector. In Ondo State, for instance, work is going on to fully exploit the bitumen resources to meet the 600,000 metric tons of asphalt imported per annum for roads and other construction projects. To consolidate on these efforts, we have also established a 30 billion naira solid minerals development fund to support other minerals exploitation activities across the country. In the oil and gas sector, the relatively higher crude oil prices supported our economic recovery. Our mutually 
beneficial engagement with oil producing communities in the Niger Delta contributed immensely to the recovery in oil production experience in recent months. We would like to thank the leadership and the communities in the Niger Delta for their continued support and to also reiterate our assurances that this administration will continue to honor our commitments to them. We cannot afford to go back to those dark days of insecurity and vandalism. We all want a country that is safe, stable, and secure for our families and communities. This means we must all come together to address any grievances through dialogue and peaceful engagement. Threats, intimidation, or violence are never the answer. We are working hard on the Ogoni Clean Up Project. During the year, we engaged eight international and local companies proposing different technologies for the mandate. They enable us to select the best and most suitable technology for the remediation work. We ask each company to conduct demonstration clean up exercise to the four local government areas of Ogoni land. These demonstrations were recently concluded and the results are being studied by the Governing Council of the Ugoni Clean Up Project. Although the project will be funded by the international oil companies, we have made provisions in the 2018 budget for the costs of oversight and governance to ensure effective implementation. On the international front, I would like to thank you, our friends and partners in the joint OPEC, non-OPEC ministerial monitoring committee who graciously granted Nigeria an exemption from the output cuts imposed on OPEC member countries in January this year. This exemption, which was extended in September 2017, significantly helped during our most challenging time. We shall continue our positive engagement with other oil producing nations to ensure that the momentum generated is sustained. Permit me, Mr. Senate President, and the Right Honorable Speaker, to state that despite the downturn in oil prices and our challenging economic circumstances, this administration was able to invest an unprecedented sum of over 1.2 trillion Naira in capital projects through the 2016 budget. This is the highest ever in the history of this country. This is a clear demonstration. This is a clear demonstration of our commitment to consolidate on our economic diversification reforms and lay a stronger foundation for future growth and development. Our sovereign wealth fund, which was established in 2011 with 1 billion United States dollars, did not receive additional investment in four years when oil prices were as high as 120 United States dollars per barrel. However, despite record low oil prices, this administration was able to invest an additional 500 million United dollars in the fund. This, <clears throat> this further demonstrates that in our struggle to have a stable and secure nation today, we have not and will not lose sight of the need to lay a solid foundation for the future prosperity of successive generations. We have asked the Sovereign Wealth Fund to look into inward and invest locally. Some of the successes we are seeing today in the agricultural sector are driven by this new investment approach by the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. 
the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority also has a very strong pipeline of local investments that will support our inclusive and diversified economic growth plan. Stability has been restored to the foreign exchange market due to the intervention by the Central Bank of Nigeria to improve access to liquidity, discourage currency speculation, and increase net foreign exchange inflows. As at the 30th of October 2017, our external reserves have increased to 34 billion United States dollars. This stability has supported our efforts to provide the enabling environment and interventions needed to empower micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, investors, manufacturers, and exporters to sustain and in some cases grow their operations. Indeed, by the second quarter of 2017, exports significantly outpaced imports, resulting in a trade surplus of 506.5 billion naira. One of the targets we set for gauging our progress in creating an enabling environment for business was to achieve a position, a positive movement in the World Ease of Doing Business Index. You will recall Nigeria experienced a decade-long decline in their ranking in 2008. Nigeria was ranked 120th. By 2015, our situation had deteriorated to 169th of the 189 countries surveyed. Our very simple, logical, and user-friendly reform are reversing this trend. A recently released World Bank Business Ranking report announced that Nigeria has moved 24 places to 145th position in 2017. I am delighted that we have met and even surpassed our target of moving at least 20 pieces up this global ranking. The same world.